Okay, let's talk audiences. Audiences are groups of users you define in Firebase Analytics that can be used in a number of different ways. You can filter analytics reports and dashboards against a particular audience. You can send Firebase notifications to a specific audience. You can send different remote config data to different audiences. And you can target these audiences in remarketing campaigns like AdWords. Now they can be very broad, like people who have made an in-app purchase, or very narrow, like Canadian women over 35 who are fans of yoga and have shared my app with their friends. And while they are quite powerful, they also have a number of limitations. And the key to most effectively using audiences is to understand these limitations. So let's go over these. First, audiences are not retroactive. When you create an audience, it will initially be empty. See, it turns out that the logic that's used to determine if a user is part of an audience is located on the client. So when you create an audience, you'll need to wait for the clients to receive that audience definition and then decide for themselves whether or not that user belongs to a particular audience. Additionally, if your audience depends on an event being triggered, like making a purchase, you'll have to have that event happen again on the client before the client decides to place that user into an audience. Second, audiences that include your user's gender, age, or interests, you know, the data you get when you hook up the ad support library, can only be used for building AdWords campaigns. You can't use them for remote config or notification groups. Finally, the way audiences currently work, once a user joins an audience, they don't ever leave. They're like the Hotel California of user groups. Now to some folks, like people who deal with remarketing campaigns, this generally works the way they expect. But for those of you new to audiences, this can cause some confusion. For instance, let's say you tried to create a just browsing audience of people who visit your in-app store but don't make a purchase. Now initially, that audience would start off pretty true to its name. People might visit your in-app store, not make a purchase, and be placed in your audience. But over time, people in that audience will make purchases, but they'll still remain in your just browsing audience, which means that this audience isn't really all that accurate anymore. It's this mix of browsers and purchasers. So my recommendation is when you first integrate Firebase Analytics, one, remember this Hotel California rule. It'll make it easier to understand what audience definitions will be useful in the long run. And two, early on in the process, add a handful of audiences that you're pretty sure you're gonna wanna use. This will ensure that they start populating as soon as people start using your app. So with that in mind, let's add an audience to our app. Now I'm gonna go back to this fascinating sample app that I've used so far in my previous two videos. So if you wanna follow along and have been using your own version of the sample app in the last couple videos, keep using it. Otherwise, any app should work as long as you've already installed Firebase Analytics and have set up a few events and a user property or two. So our marketing team is very interested in cat people who use this slider here. They think they'd be the perfect audience to upsell our new laser pointer feature to. So they're gonna to wanna to create an audience of these people, which we'll do by combining the adjust slider event with the dog or cat person user property. Let's give it a try. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is create an audience. I'll head on over to the Firebase console and select Analytics, and then select my app. I'll select Audiences here, and you'll notice that Firebase already has two audiences set up for me, all users and purchasers. Now to create my new audience, I'll select New Audience. We'll call my audience Cat Sliders, and I'll add a short description here to remind myself what this audience really is about. So the first thing we're gonna do is select user property from this dropdown. Uh, notice that the comparison operator here says equal to, but if you look at the full dropdown, you can see this is actually for numbers and I'm storing this as a text string. So I need to select this exactly matches condition instead. And then here I can select cat person from the dropdown. Now, if you don't see these values in the dropdown, your app might not have submitted enough user properties yet for them to appear, but you can still type them in by hand. Next, I'll click and to add another condition to my audience. Since I want an audience of cat people who have adjusted the slider, I'll also go ahead and select event and then select adjust slider. By default, it gives me this count greater than zero condition, which is what I want. Uh, notice this add parameter feature. This allows me to refine this audience based on some of the custom parameters passed in with this event. If I wanted to make this audience consist of people who only adjust the slider to the right side, for instance, I could do that here. But in my case, this isn't really necessary. And uh, that's about it. I'll create my audience and I'm done. Now you can see that this audience is initially empty because of that whole audiences are not retroactive thing I was talking about earlier. But let's go into my app and test it. So before I start up my app, I'll double check that I already have analytics debugging turned on, which I did a couple of videos ago. And now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm part of this audience. I'll specify that yes, I am a cat person. And then I'll go ahead and use this slider. Now I'll hit Command Shift H to go into the background. And if you dig into the output here, you can see I have this audience evaluation results section. 
Here it looks like it's added me to the audience with the ID of two, which I'm pretty sure is the audience I just created. And now if I go back to the Firebase console, you can see that my audience, which formerly had fewer than 10 users, now has uh, fewer than 10 users. Or I guess more accurately, fewer than 10 devices. Uh, but trust me, when this app gets more users, it'll be a lot more exciting. So once this audience gets beyond 10 users, I can start using it to filter my reports, send notifications, or target via my AdWords campaigns. And then I can finally start selling these cat people my laser pointer upgrade. So hopefully this is enough to get you started with audiences. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I think audiences work best if you have a bunch of them already defined when you incorporate analytics into your app. So start thinking about what audiences make the most sense for your app. In the meantime, feel free to check out our documentation, subscribe to the Firebase channel, and I will see you soon on the next episode of Firecasts.